everyone remembers the, the flick pass. Marshall's still going. Marshall's got Richards coming up outside. Now inside. But it would have been just another flick pass if Paddy hadn't put out the defending score. The thing that stands out, if you have to put it in order, was when Benny Gallier made the speech midway through the season and, and challenged everyone to keep our goal of top four. His blatant refusal to consider changing our goal whilst our original one of making the top four was still available to us. We're underway. One of the most publicised qualifying finals we've ever seen. I remember um, Shinzi grabbed me just before kickoff and said, oh, if you get a scrum, try this move. Prince to the open side to Hodgson. They run decoy after decoy. Marshall, Marshall, he's over! The Tigers are in! We tried it and first scrum it came off and uh, scored in the corner and it's definitely one of the highlights of my career, um, scoring that try. And we went into that game, the Dragons had every right to go into that game confident. They'd, they'd beaten us, I think, on most occasions and and not only that, Mark Gaznia had had an absolute field day against us every time he played. Here's his man again. He's in again, Gaznia. He scores two tries. He makes a third try. Gaznia scores. Mark Gaznia is obviously one of the best centres in the world at that time, and um, St George had a had a star-studded lineup. Tim had moved Pat Richards to the centres for defence to mark him out on that side, and he did a fantastic job. Down in the touch. He was exceptional. No one really gave us a chance to, to win that game and to just turn up to a, a full house at um, the SFS thing, it was, you know, it was unbelievable. Tigers! West Tigers! Unfortunately for Paddy, he injured himself just before half time. I came in field and, and then I, I got tackled and I just heard a couple of crunches and clicks around in my legs and I just thought, oh, that's it, game over, season's over. Pretty shattering as a mate to, to know one of your mates was uh, down and and not going to be able to play the next week if we won that game. You know, with obviously the grand final a week away, I, I just thought that there was no chance. If we needed any further motivation, um, that was it to, to pretty much do it for Paddy. Prince is waiting for it now. He's inside the 10, he goes to second man, Marshall. Quick hands, they're over again. An historic moment. The Merge Club, the West Tigers, will go to their first grand final. Well, Pat. He didn't train with us at all uh, during the week. We thought he wasn't playing, to tell you, uh, to be honest. Um, you know, and the coach sort of said to us, um, we'll prepare as if Pat's not going to play. My foot ballooned, um, so it was massive. And um, you know, day by day, um, slowly got better and better. But it wasn't until the last sort of session that you know, I probably thought that I, I could um, get through it. Well, during the fitness test, we didn't see it because the, the coach and the staff and Pat himself wanted to do it away from the squad. He went out with the doctor after having maybe six or seven needles in his ankle to, to, to numb the pain. And I remember clearly we, he came back in the sheds with his head down. And we all thought, oh no, you know, it's, he's, he's not going to be able to play. And then just out of the blue, he goes, yeah, bruh, I'm in. And that was it. The room just went up. They threw the Gatorades, the waters, the, the cups went flying. It was just everything. The excitement in the room then. It's hard to describe, you know, you, you never know you're going to win a game of football until that final whistle goes. But it, it sure felt like we were going to win it then. It's probably one of the best moments in my life, uh, hear all the boys and the support that they gave me. and um, You know, it was a real special time and you know, I was just pumped up from that moment on to get out there. It is time to go as Travis Norton leads the Cowboys out. And now Scott Prince takes them out. Listen to this. Listen to this now. And a chance for the captains. The boat strikes the ball. Tronk takes the first run. And the kick going down. Thurston takes the ball. I think he's back. See, he's on the end of it and then pulled down desperately. Bowen goes back on the inside. Justin Smith, he flops the ball back. Thurston to Bowen. Bowen scores. 21 tries for the year. Bowen over this tackle. It has. Marshall holding it out. Manawira to Richards. Richards for the corner. But everything is gone. No try to the middle of the start. 
Everybody remembers a key moment of the game. Nobody seems to remember the story behind it. I had dramas on my shoulders that year and Shinji sort of didn't want me targeted so he put me every now and then I'd swap with Paddy. The reason Benji first hurt his shoulder is because I think Benji thought he was about 100 kilos and he used to try and go and put hits on. It's certainly by no means that Benji couldn't tackle. Yeah, it was the opposite. There was a time in the game about 20 minutes into the first half Paddy said to me, oh look, my, um, my ankle's starting to kill me. Uh, you know, I need, a, I need to have a bit of a break. A floating Benji Marshall brings it back. Comes to them, tempts them, turns them. Sort of because of my injury, um, I was defending in centres and sent Benji Marshall back to where the normal, normally where the winger goes. It was, it was like it was meant to be because the, Thurston kicked it um, down the short side and, and he sort of got taken out after he kicked it, which didn't allow him to chase down in the line. And I remember Hodjo, he claimed the ball and sort of did a, um, well ran at the line and so I wrapped around him and, and Travis Morden I think tried to take him out and by taking him out left a massive gap for me to sort of run through which Thurston was late to get there because he, he got taken out. That's how it sort of happened where he picked up the ball and, from Brett Hodgson and he made sort of half a break. Norton, he took him late, Marshall skips away, Marshall skips away. I remember just sitting in the stand and thinking um, Benji Marshall's got the ball, anything can happen. I just remember streaking away, uh, I can still see the crowd on the left sideline up in the air and, Got to Matty Bowen and tried to goose step him and that didn't work, he, he sort of figured out what I was doing. At that point I thought, oh no Benji, what have you done? I thought Benji had actually bombed the play. At the corner of my left eye, I just, I don't even know how he got there. But I just saw Paddy and instinct sort of took over. The audaciousness of the pass from Benji Marshall, um, that, that stood out. But the flick pass was just... I think in the commentary they said, who does that? I can't wait to see this flick pass from this angle. Looks at Bowen. I mean, who tries that? Who does that? How did he get the ball to Pat Richards? Was that a flick pass from Marshall? At, at the end, yeah. Oh, stop it. To Pat's credit, most players, a lot of players, wouldn't have even caught that ball because they wouldn't have expected it. The very fact that he was there to take that pass was huge in the first place because um, yeah, he was he was very, very close to missing the grand final all up. On the left-hand side of the field, Rod Jensen coming across and he just went, see you later, straight in the mush. And next thing I knew, he fended Rod Jensen off and scored the try. You know, he sort of do that stuff at training a bit, but I don't know, I think he just knew. Um, and luckily the, luckily the ball went straight into his hands and. Um, yeah, but if it, if it was anyone else, I don't know if they would have scored that try. Yeah, I, as soon as I picked the ball up, I, I sort of uh, went straight for the line. I seen some cover coming across, and um, Rod Jensen was there, and I just seen him, and I thought, oh, if I don't get the fend out here, I'm going to go bundling him to touch. So, luckily, I got it out. I think it's probably the first time I've, I've used a fend off my right. I normally fend people off my left, but um, it seemed to work pretty well, and um, scored a try. The fend that he put on Rod Jensen was well, it was it was pretty enormous, and. Um, yeah, I'm just glad he was there to, to score the try. Well, the fan, the fan was was enormous. It's, uh, he made a great, great effort, uh, Rod Jensen, to, to get there. But um, just to see it work, and, and I know that you know, Paddy uh, says to Benji that he's the reason they scored, and Benji says to Paddy, no, he's the reason. That... Paddy always says to me, if it wasn't for me, bro, and true story. He said, if it wasn't for me, you wouldn't have got the book. No, you know, it happened so fast. I sort of can't really remember too much of it. It happened too quick and, and all of a sudden it was all over. It wasn't until a few days later, you've seen it on the replay uh, a few times that you realise what actually happened. And it was a massive moment. Oh, that is one of the great grand final tries. In big games, they, they draw out the special moment. It's the special players that come up with them, like the Benji Marshall and Pat Richards. That's just, I guess, another moment that will go down in history and, and be, be forever watched. There was a confident feeling after that in the playing group and, and half time and, and beyond. Across the park, Farrah linking it. Lovrenke! Lovrenke has scored for the West Tigers! In the flick pass to Norton, and Travis Norton has put the Cowboys back in it. Pushes away third time off Thurman. Goes to Elford, goes to Fitzhenry. Daniel Fitzhenry has scored for the West Tigers. We're being clear late in the game. He struck it. Oh. It looks fantastic. The flag's up. 
He's got support in Elfin. 